Thank you. I now call on Jenny Minto to be followed by Graeme Simpson. Up to four minutes, please, Ms Minto. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I've been dipping into the Radio 4 series, 39 Ways to Save the Planet, and one episode caught my attention. It was called Local Wisdom. The programme suggested that Indigenous knowledge and direct historical experience had lots to offer the world in the journey to net zero. Whether this wisdom is the knowledge that's been passed down through the generations by the Inuits, or the astute observations in a 100-year-old Isla Farmer's diary, these are insightful glimpses into our, how our forebears lived their lives in tune with nature. So how do we get back to that? Well, COP26 in Glasgow is a great opportunity. Not a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but perhaps a once-in-a-species opportunity. Our species. We should not only demand that our leaders hammer out solutions, we need to inspire them to do so. I get my inspiration and my optimism for the future from the local wisdom I find in abundance in my own community. I suggest that world leaders do the same, to keep 1.5 alive. Across Argyll and Butte, people are engaging in finding solutions for climate change and a just transition. Time for Change Argyll is one such group, and it is mobilising for a better world, joining the school strikes at Loch Gilphead Joint Campus and then creating a great blue wave of people along the seafront at Oban to represent rising sea levels and flooding caused by climate change, but also celebrating our fantastic coastal communities that we must protect. The Dynamic Coast Project has been providing strategic evidence on the extent of coastal erosion ac across Scotland since 2012. And as Alistair Allen mentioned, Tyree's natural beaches and sand dunes have in the past provided important protection to the low-lying land behind. These must continue to be valued and managed to continue providing this protection. As part of COP26, the former slate-producing island of Ling has been chosen as one of the six sites across Scotland to have a Royal Institute of Architects marker made from traditional materials to highlight places potentially affected by rising water levels. Ling, like the neighbouring island of Easdale, is itself suffering from serious coastal erosion. Its community is investigating different ways to reduce the erosion and working with Dynamic Coast, giving them a framework to do so. Separately, the community is exploring with Hess and High the possibility of mining slate again, starting a community enterprise to provide local material for local use and creating local jobs, bringing back traditional skills to work with a local resource. In other words, local wisdom combining with science to find workable solutions. And there are many, many more projects happening across Argyll and Butte. Sea Wilding is returning native oysters to Loch Craigenish. They create complex reefs where young fish thrive and biodiversity increases, restoring the health of a local marine environment. Local people working with the scientists at SAMS. Fine Futures on Butte are aiming for a carbon zero island. They have a myriad of projects from electric bikes to upcycling furniture. And this year's project encourages activities around growing food, sharing food and making use of local resources whilst learning new skills. And farmers across Argyll and Butte who are committed to sustainability but need to be involved in the decisions that will affect them as they know what works for their land. So COP26 in Glasgow will bring together senior politicians and scientists from all over the world. But as well as talking, they need to listen. They need to listen to the women and men of their own communities, people who already possess the local will and wisdom to, com com to combat climate change. Of course, I think Argyll and Butte is special, but it's not alone in being home to people with the local wisdom to find the solutions for climate change. The great and the good at COP26 in Glasgow need to listen to them. Thank you.